Returning to our discussion of switches, switches can be further subdivided into two different categories, manual and mechanical or automatic switches. Manual switches, as the name implies, require a mono or hand or foot or elbow or other human body part to hit them. Manual switches are points of human machine interaction and could be a push button, a selector switch, a toggle switch, or a drum or cam switch. Manual switches are meant for human interaction. A mechanical or automatic switch is a two-state switch that does not require human intervention to change states. An example would be a limit switch, a pressure switch, a float switch, a temperature switch, a magnetic proximity switch, or a rotational speed switch. Mechanical or automatic switches, as the name implies, allow an electrically controlled system to function without human intervention. An example might be a pressure switch that starts a pump when pressure falls below some desired value and stops it when pressure rises above a certain value. The differential between the cut in and drop out pressure is known as span or hysteresis or override and is necessary for the proper operation of such a system. The differential prevents the pump from bouncing back and forth between on and off when operating in a region close to the set point. We'll take a closer look at different types of manual and mechanical or automatic switches and some sensors in later lectures. Devices or programmed instructions internal to an electrically controlled system are those components that do the actual comparison of inputs and issue outputs. This is where electrically controlled systems employing traditional hardwired relay-based ladder logic and those employing PLCs radically divide. Both types of systems require input in the form of switches or sensors, and both types of systems issue outputs to contactors or solenoid-operated valves or indicators like pilot lamps. However, those systems employing traditional hardwired relay-based ladder logic really are composed of physical devices, called relays, really physically connected to one another in a specific manner, whereas those employing PLCs use user-defined instruction sets that mimic the function of relays. One can already see an advantage of the PLC in, in contrast to traditional hardwire relay-based ladder logic. To change the functionality of an electrically controlled system employing traditional hardwire relay-based ladder logic, one must physically rewire the system. Whereas, to change the functionality of an electrically controlled system employing a PLC, one must simply reprogram the system. This is to suggest that electrically controlled systems employing PLCs are significantly easier to install, modify and troubleshoot than those employing traditional hardwire relay-based ladder logic. This is a major advantage for all industries that require repeatable and dependable functionality from an electrically controlled system. This does come at a price in terms of both monetary and time investment. PLCs have been traditionally considered more expensive and come with a significant learning curve in comparison to traditional hardwire relay-based ladder logic. However, that is changing as PLCs have become cheaper and easier to use. Regardless, the instructions written inside a PLC program are programmed in the exact same manner as one would employ a relay inside an electrically controlled system employing traditional hardwire relay-based ladder logic. The fundamental difference between these two types of systems can kind of be summated as this. The control relays inside an electrically controlled system employing traditional hardwire relay-based ladder logic are real. The instruction set inside an electrical controlled system employing a PLC mimics the function of control relays. A control relay is a device internal to the logic of an electrically controlled system and only switches control level signals. A switch associated with a control relay could turn on or off a coil or a solenoid, which in turn would drive a primary load. Control relays are seldom used to directly drive a load and would only be found doing so in the lowest of low power applications. Control relays, as the name implies, switch only control level signals. A control relay can take many forms. General purpose control relays have a collection of normally open and normally closed switches 
that change states when the coil of the relay is energized. Timer relays perform timing functions and counter relays can count. The control relays mimicked by a PLC instruction set perform additional high-level tasks. Whether the control relay is a physical device or a mimicked instruction set, it can be thought of as a device with a coil and a set of associated contacts that change states when the coil is energized. Both the coil and the contacts of a control relay switch only control level signals. It is the arrangement of input devices, output devices, and internal control relays that dictate the function of an electrically controlled system. Our previous examples employed a single input device, a switch, and a single output device, a contactor or a solenoid operated valve. Consider the following modifications of these electrically controlled systems and with it the different functionality these modifications bring. Consider the simple addition of two switches to our ladder logic diagram consisting of push button 1 and push button 2 in series. This is the logical AND operator, the only way an operator can energize the solenoid of DCV1 sol A is if both push button 1 and push button 2 are simultaneously closed. This is a common safety feature for a device that requires an operator to have both hands cleared from the workspace prior to extending a hydraulic cylinder. An example might be a hydraulically driven press or a shear. Alternatively, consider two switches, push button 1 and push button 2, wired in parallel with each other. This is the logical OR operator. The solenoid would energize if push button 1 only was closed, if push button 2 only was closed, or if they were both simultaneously closed. This is a common feature for a device that requires an operator to energize the solenoid of DCV1 sol A from two different locations. An example might be a hydraulically driven lift with two independent control points. These two control systems both make use of two inputs, the two push buttons, and one output, the solenoid. There are no relays internal to the ladder logic, so one might be led to believe that there is nothing internal to the ladder logic. However, the two systems function in radically different manners. For our first system, both push button 1 and push button 2 must be simultaneously pressed for the cylinder to extend. For our second circuit, either push button 1 or push button 2 can be pressed for the cylinder to extend. The ladder logic itself, being the electrical relationship and the physical wiring of the two switches, is the internal construction of the electrically controlled system and dictates its behavior. Consider the maintenance, repair, upgrade, and modification of hardwired electrically controlled systems. If the first system needed to be modified such that it had the functionality of the second system, it would necessitate the physical rewiring of push button 1 and push button 2. If this was one of many such systems, imagine the sheer volume of tedious labor it would necessitate unscrewing, removing, rerouting, and reattaching all those wires. This is the major advantage of a PLC. As alluded to previously, the PLC is a ruggedized industrial computer that evaluates inputs and issues outputs based on a programmable instruction set. If this electrically controlled system's behavior was governed by a PLC, it would still require two inputs, push button 1 and push button 2, and it would still issue one output to the solenoid. However, the programmable instruction set requires no physical rewiring, but rather a simple reprogramming if the functionality needs to be changed. This is a major advantage. Consider additional functionality to this electrically controlled system offered by slightly increased complexity internal to the ladder logic diagram. These extra rungs act almost like parallel paths if one was to draw this circuit using traditional schematics. Consider a control relay CR1 and its associated contacts, normally open CR1A and normally open CR1B. In its de-energized state, these associated contacts would not allow conduction from the high to low side of the ladder logic, 
and both solenoid A and the M coil of the contactor would be de-energized. If, however, an operator were to simultaneously press both push button 1 and push button 2, the coil of CR1 would be energized. When the coil of CR1 is energized, its associated contacts change states. Normally open CR1A closes, as does normally open CR1B. The now closed CR1A contact energizes DCV1 sole A. The energized solenoid A shifts DCV1 to the straight through position and the cylinder extends. Simultaneously, the now closed CR1B contact energizes coil M. Coil M closes the M contactor and the motor starts turning. The hardwired relay logic or programmed instructions internal to the ladder logic now offer the ability to coordinate what was once two separate systems. This could be used to create a hydraulically extended, electrically rotated drill. We'll learn in later lectures how relays and programmed instructions internal to ladder logic offer the ability to latch, unlatch, i.e. remember and clear previous states, sequence, interlock, count, compare, coordinate, communicate in time operations. Again, inputs in series internal to the ladder logic perform the logical AND function. The only way the electrical load on the right of the rung can be energized is if all contacts in series are closed. The electrical load would be de-energized if any contact in series is open. Inputs in parallel internal to the ladder logic perform the logical OR function. The electrical load on the right of the rung can be energized if any contact in parallel is closed. The only way the electrical load can be de-energized is if all contacts in parallel are open. The hardwired connections or programmed instructions internal to the ladder logic can perform numerous other functions, including but not limited to latching, unlatching, interlocking, sequencing, counting, comparing, coordinating, communicating, and timing operations. Let's return to close out our earlier discussion about troubleshooting an electrically controlled system. Consider this electrically controlled, hydraulically extended, electrically rotated drill system. What could go wrong with the system? How could it break? How could you identify potential problems? The most important step in troubleshooting a malfunctioning system is to first understand how the system is intended to operate. That's what we just did. We looked at the hydraulic primary, the electrical primary, and the ladder logic diagram controlling both primary aspects of the system. I will be so bold to say you simply cannot perform troubleshooting without performing this step. Yes, there are tricks of the trade and shortcuts to be employed, but without a solid understanding of how a system is intended to operate, any troubleshooting attempts without this base knowledge is superstitious ritual and button pushing unbecoming of a technician. Only when you understand how something is intended to work can you pinpoint where a problem may lie. At its most basic level, troubleshooting an electrically controlled system is the determination in which realm the problem exists. Is it electrical? If electrical in nature, is it in the electrical pilot or the electrical primary system? Or is it hydraulic? Or, more sinisterly, is it an electrical problem that appears to be hydraulic in nature, or vice versa? That's ultimately what troubleshooting is. It's the success of bracketing down and down into smaller and smaller target areas until the problem is found and rectified. Good troubleshooters do this in an efficient and systematic method, and most importantly, get it right the first time. Keep in mind there is no limit to the wrong that can happen in the real world, but let's imagine some scenarios and see if you can assign them to one realm or the other. 